We're in this morning and the first thing that we've done is shoot into town uh, to put together a chemical spill response kit. Didn't think I'd be doing that this morning, but the paint is not uh, not yet dry on the floor so we're going to have to find alternative uh, jobs to do outside the building pretty much. So I ordered this spill response kit the other day along with some bonding for the chemicals just to make sure that we're kind of sticking to all the uh, health and safety regs. This was pretty cheap off eBay. I think it was around uh, 18, 20 kit, quid, kid. 18, 20 quid. So it uh, comes with a load of absorbent sheets in the bottom, a couple of absorbent noodles, a hazard bag, some tie wraps, and uh, we're just adding to it some uh, chemically resistant gloves just in case we have an accident with any caustics or acids or anything like that at least we'll be prepared for it we'll stick this to one side probably mount it up on the wall somewhere so it's easily accessible should we need it there we go chemical spill response kit so i think what we're going to tackle today is the wire and the support system for the hops when they decide to come out of the ground I've been across to a uh, tool station last week and we picked up this white rope which is pretty thick stuff, it's 6mm uh, six mil. Six mil wire rope, pretty good uh, a load of clamps and a big old turnbuckle along with some bolts so we're going to get the ladders out, climb the wall, drill some bolts in and uh, get this wire strung up and then we'll drop some jute uh, string, some degradable string off the wire and down for the hops to climb up. Right, we've got one in right up there. I don't know if you can see, it's washed out a little bit. Let's try this. There we go. Yeah, we're right up there. Uh, I've been for a 14 mil drill bit to put these eye bolts in. They only had a 450 mil long one, so I'm still like two foot off at wall to get them in. But uh, yeah, this is what I've got to do, check it out. Uh, as you can see, precarious, but quite exhilarating at the same time. I'll be back if I don't fall off and die. It certainly caused me to break into a bit of a sweat up and down them ladders. I hope you can see this, but all the strings are anchored firmly in the ground across here, and then they run up and attach onto the wire, which is way up there. It's difficult to see actually on the camera. Hopefully, it'll come across a bit better on YouTube, but they come all the way down right there so one two three four five six seven ten ten strings we've got i think we had eight hot binds but chances are they'll throw out more than one vine each so we should get something on every string this year at least i'm ready for a coffee now so that's my next job so we've got a few herbs and whatnot planted in the in the hop bed, tidied it up a little bit. I've just watered all the plants as well, but I've realised I forgot to water 
these bad boys and uh, in the next 10 minutes I'm going to shoot up to uh, the motor spares place and actually pick up a, another battery for the car because I don't think there's any uh, point in trying to bring that other one back to life it just seems to be cranking slower and slower every morning so I s sort of suspect uh, she's done for boys so uh, we'll take her out swap her over and put a brand spanking new one in provided they're not too expensive now that I can just about swallow that's not bad is it trade tech battery 58 amp hour and this is what she looks like so uh, 540 amps we'll get her in and uh, I parked up outside the uh, spares place and the, the engine wouldn't start <laughs> Fortunately, on the second crank it did. I thought I was going to have to ring Stuart up to bring me some spanners so I could change this straight over, but we got lucky. to the floor a little bit so we've had a walk into town and other way uh, I've had a bag of chips yes a bag of chips so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start rolling the, again with the paint in the areas that have the uh, tanks above them so we should be able to it won't get disturbed in the future, you know, that's what I'm thinking. We should be able to put the stuff, the tanks back on and that paint under there will be durable and should last for some time. That is the plan. Whether it's actually going to work like that or not, we'll see. Throwing some chewing gum on the floor. Anyway, roll us out. Would you even believe it? Ta-da! More red paint on the floor. Coat number two. I think that will do. We just have to let that dry overnight now and then we'll move all of the kit back into position. And once the kit is there, then we'll probably start to do this side of the building. Uh, right up to the shutter doors. As long as we can walk down that side. You catch my drift. <laughs> I think now I might uh, start to put some timber on the cold room doors. I know there are a lot of people out there waiting for me to sort of conclude this cold room project. Um, we've still got a month or so before the weather starts to change dramatically uh, as to where it's going to affect the beer. As long as our average temps are sort of below 12 degrees and peaks are much higher than uh, 16, 17, we should be alright, certainly not going to get warm in here anyway, even if it gets to 20 degrees outside, it stays cool in here, it is like a little dungeon, uh, but yes, we will be visiting that shortly, probably in May, just going to get some heat exchangers in the back, car radiators, and then glycol pump, and I'm toying with the idea of using the remote under counter chillers, sorry not remote chillers, the under counter chillers that we had in the brew shed up the top there. Fail that, I'm going to look for a remote chiller with an external heat dump and that's what we're going to use to cool the glycol to enable us to chill this big mother. Right, one last job before we go home. I'm going to paint all this remaining floor. I must say though, if you're going to buy any floor paint, don't buy this stuff. This, well you can hardly tell what it says now, but you'll recognise it. The polyurethane floor paint takes 10 years to dry. The stuff from tool station takes about 8 hours. So that's what I'd buy if I had to give you any advice. 
So again, there's a good shot of the zone that's gonna get hit. So we'll just get the paint down and we'll come back for a flip of the switch. Ah, special effects. Hey, you like them, don't you really? So uh, that's it, floor done. Uh, we're gonna jump in the car and shoot home. The time is now 5.23. Oakley, dokley, folkley. So now we're home. And, uh, well, I'm going to have some food. Of course, we're going to cook up an absolute delight tonight. Utilising a little bit of what you got. So, in our oven. Oh, no, it's not in the oven. It's in the fridge outside. Hold on. Yes, these folks adjusting the lighting, of course, are the beautiful, beautiful pork chops donated to the cause by Billy the Sheep after, of course, uh, he's taken our grain and fed it to his freaking animals. So for those of you out there with a vegan stroke vegetarian frame of mind, I suggest you come back tomorrow because this, folks, is what proper, and I mean proper, pork chops looks alike. These are absolutely divine. Look at the size of them and look, most importantly, at this proper pork chop has proper rind on it and if you're cooking them oh look at that and if you're cooking them in the oven then you gotta cut that rind up otherwise it'll firm up on you and it'll turn your pork chop into some kind of uh, you know rising goddess out of the pan as it curls over which is no good you need to cut that rind Jesus it's got it's tough rind I could put it on the chopping board and use a knife but I'm just about to cut up some vegetables so what I've done is I've had a root around on the vegetable rack or in the fridge and I found some veg that's passed its best. It's not worth throwing out yet, but it's not in great condition. So you wouldn't want to prepare it, for instance, as the centerpiece of the menu. No, no. So what I like to do instead is, if I'm cooking any meat in the oven, normally just chop up a bunion, which you can see here in the background I'm going to chop up the old onion there we go that's that's that done and uh, any other bits of veg that we uh, happen to have lying around just wash my hands here for you a second boys there we go got the worst of the jousters off my hands so let's just tune back into the correct position now we're back in shot, there we go. Uh, we'll chop this veg up, but for those of you who are interested, today I'm drinking the Queen of Diamonds by none other than the Wild Card Brewery. This is a 5% hazy IPA. Oh, some of the best beers I've had from that stable. And if anyone's interested, as well, I also met Jager Wise in Birmingham. She's the head brewer. So, yeah, look, I've got some uh, spring onions. Look at that, crispy, worse for wear. No good for man, no beast. So what we're gonna do is remove the tip edge and remove the top edge. And we're just gonna clunk them up just like that and then this can go in the bottom of our baking tray 
And then look at these radishes. It's not every day you see a radish like that with an haircut, is it? So exactly the same thing. Haircut and all. We're just gonna chop these babies in half. And they're going in. Just like that. And then the main event, of course, the bunion. You can't really cook meat without throwing an onion in there. When we do a chicken, we like to stick stick the old onion right up inside. Never done the beer can chicken though. Has anyone out there ever done the beer can chicken where you put a beer can inside a chicken's giblet? Uh, not really my cup of tea, quite frankly. But, yeah, anyway, I'd rather drink the beer. I don't really want all the paint. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm not really going to finely dice this onion. We're just going to we're just going to clack it up into little bits. Probably, I don't know, the kind of size that you'd have on a hot dog. And then, yeah, we're just going to sprinkle this into the pan. Just like that, he says. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is place the meat directly on top of all of this lovely, lovely veg. I'm gonna get some veg under every single piece of meat to hold it off the bottom of the tray. There we go. And I'll show you this when we bring it out of the oven. And this doesn't need any fat on it because of all the fat that's gonna render out of the meat. But that, folks, I mean, would you just look onto her? That is my dinner. And the kids, of course, you know, I'm not going to eat all six pork chops myself. Right, we'll come back in a minute for the money shot. Right, we've got some vegetables a cooking. Let's just adjust this. So, Gemma's back home because I was home alone. And she's flipped this. So, uh, we've just had it one turn. Oh my god, that's. Bosh. They've been turned once with this. Oh, baby. Let's just get in there. Oh, all that yummy goodness. Oh, just look at it. That is my freaking thumbnail right there. Oh, my God. So, yes, the best thing to do now. Look at all the fat. We've got crackling on every single one of these. It's amazeballs. So what we're going to do now, we'll take the meat out and then get all these lovely juices here, look. All caramelised vegetables that we put in. And we'll make the gravy out of this. Oh, friggin' right we will. Oh, look at that. Gem. Just look at it. It's got like, it's got crackling on it and everything. Just look at it. Oh, I'm really quite excited about eating this. So, uh, yeah. Cheers, Billy. So that's it. And the more keen-eyed of you may have noticed that I've shaved and cut my hair as well this evening. So I'm just about to... Well, it's quarter to nine, it's just a late tea. I'm gonna tuck into this amazing loveliness and we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog. I know you're jealous. <laughs>